But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. That's right, Rock. That is how winning is done. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk. And here, Tim. Oh, it's Monday. We're going to talk about a lot of things. And I think that quote from Rocky is very apropos. We're going to talk about Brian Dable. We're going to talk about the juggernaut. We're going to talk about conditioning. We're going to we're going to we're going to ask and delve into the question: Are the Giants and are the players in the NFL conditioned for contact? And, and that's going to be the new phrase I'm going to come up with: conditioned, like operational cap space. We're going to go with conditioned for contact. A uh, little giant head scratching news we want to bring up. It's not head scratching news. The Giants have reached out and signed offensive lineman Eric Smith, the former Giant who was with the team from 4009, uh, excuse me, 2019 from Virginia. Originally signed with as um, undrafted free agent with the Dolphins. He's gone to, I know, the Patriots, the Jets, the Cowboys, and the Cardinals. This will be, his, like I said, his second stint with the Giants. He was with us in 19, 6'4", 308 pounds, played in four NFL games. It started one. Um, if this is the guy we're relying on to be a depth piece, we got some severe problems. We got some issues on that offensive line. We, I think we all know that. I, I've said this before. I've said it on a stream. If you are on the top 53, if, you're on, if you make the 53-man roster coming out of camp, and you're a giant player, I would not get comfortable if you were within those last seven spots because the Giants are going to be scanning the waiver wire for additional talent. Now, normally I would say the last three spots are always up for grabs after you come out of camp, but I'm thinking the Giants, it could be as high as seven to eight players they may potentially shift away from or move over to the practice squad or just move on completely after they bring in some people that were just bringing some free agents that were just waived for the final cutdown. And I, I really just kind of think that's um, that's what we need to that's what we need to address. I want to talk about Andrew Thomas for a minute? I want to. Should, I was thinking about this yesterday because there was a report at a training camp that he had his ankle rolled up on by Leonard Williams. Uh, while he didn't really miss any practice time, he still took all the snaps. Um, it, it was shown that he was a little gimpy going around. Um, so you know what? It's 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 an interesting. And as of today, I know they're saying that he's not limp and he's got no extra tape on him. But is it potentially a good idea to put this man, to put Andrew Thomas, who we are going to have to rely on heavily because he's really our only experienced Giants offensive lineman? I don't count Feliciano or Glowinski as Giants. Yep. Well, they're Giants now, but I'm not saying they're not they're not experienced with the Giants. In regards to an organization, they weren't drafted by the Giants, but he is really the linchpin to this line. Would it be smart just to throw him on a pitch count for a little bit? Just to keep his his freshness and, and availability for the Giants there, just to make sure that he is there for the opening part of the season. You know, I, like I said, I would I would limit his reps a little bit in training camp, and then I would uh, I would limit his reps in in the preseason games. But like I said, I mean, I mean, a pitch count is not a bad idea for the guy. We're going to need him. He is going to be the stalwart. He has to be the linchpin for this offensive line. He has to be. And and there's going to be no there's going to be no if buts or doubts about that. Brian Dable the other day on Sunday had his team running conditioning drills. Now, people always think I stick up for Pat Leonard, but I don't. I just say that sometimes he's a necessary evil. He said something stupid today on Twitter. He talked about how, you know, running laps just last year was frowned upon and a, and a bad thing. And the, now then we see the Giants out there conditioning. People need to understand, and this is why I get upset, that you could tell when there's certain people who've never played the sport because of the fact that there's a difference between being punished for running laps or being punished via running laps or just conditioning in general, you know, running sprints, building up your endurance, you know, feeding the beast. You know, I mean, there's a difference. There's a huge difference. One is the fact that you're punishing professionals in the way that you barely, you would barely punish high school players. And the other way is just going out and reconditioning or helping your players gain conditioning. And the only way you can do that is a lot of times is cardiovascular exercises. <laughs> I mean, that's the way you can help build conditioning. That's the way you help you build your wind, you build your endurance. So it's not about the fact that they're being punished for running sprints. 
It's helping them get their legs in shape, get their bodies ready for the rigors of playing a 17 game season, 18 weeks, over 18 weeks, plus three preseason games. I did find it interesting that um, Brian Diablo came out and basically said that he's going to play everyone in preseason. <laughs> that, that, you know, this opening game, people, you know, starters are going to go. You know, may only go a series, may go two series, but starters will go in preseason because we got to get these guys, to, we got to get them working together in a game environment. There is a big difference between playing or practicing and then actually going up against another opponent that you haven't seen every single day for four weeks. There's a huge, there's a huge difference in reference to that. And I think he's smart to make sure that he is playing his guys so they can help build up a continuity. They can, they can help build up a cohesiveness. And I think that's a, I think that's a, was a very intelligent approach. I was thinking about this, this topic. The other, I, I did a video on this topic a couple months ago, oh, about a month ago, but I never released it. It was about the injuries in the NFL and how with the, the new CBAs that have come out over the last 20 years, how we've seen the limitation of practices in reference to pads. We, we've, we've seen, we've witnessed the, the limitations regards to having full contact drills with the pads over the last 20, 30 years. And I noticed that, and I went to this, I went to the players association website and they have an interesting, they have an interesting area on that website where they talk about injuries and they list out the injuries and the amount of injuries uh, for the entire league. And they break it down over like a 15 year, a 20 year period. And it's interesting that it shows that there is, there is no, since the CBAs have become more, I would say player friendly in regards to contact and camp that the injuries, the injuries have not decreased over the last 10 years. It's actually interesting that a lot of times the injuries have increased. Now you go back into the COVID season when there was no training camp whatsoever. Well, not was no training camp, but there's no preseason games. You, and you watch the first four weeks of that season. And it's 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 the, the the dichotomy of the situation is extremely interesting because what happens is you could see that there over that period of time that first four weeks after you know during COVID where there was no preseason there was a large amount of injuries, a large a large amount of concussions, a large amount of ACL tears, just a larger amount of, of injuries that were that that basically happened was you had X amount of injuries in that COVID season. And I think there was almost like a 20% increase over the last three years. Now that should tell you something. Then you come down to the fact that we gain a preseason, we lose a preseason game, but we gain a regular season game. And, And I get, I get concerned because you have limited the amount of times that you can wear pads in camp. I think it's something like 11. You can have like 11 padded practices. You are limiting the amount of time that you're allowing people to work themselves into game shape during these preseason games. Now, there is a huge difference. Anyone, again, that's played the sport understands this. There is a huge difference between being in shape and being in game shape. Being in shape means you can do certain things. Being in game shape means you can play the, you can run that 60 minutes. You can run, you can run through that and still have a little gas in the tank when you're in the fourth quarter with two minutes left. That you have the ability that, you know, you're not sitting there, you know, sucking down on the oxygen that when you were running gassers and training camp that, you know, that helped feed, like I said, to help feed the leg, help feed your legs. But I think the interesting situation is that as we're seeing less contact in preseason, as we're seeing less contact in training camp, the injuries have not gone down. There is no huge drop and this, is, and this is all comes from the Players Association website. There is no huge drop in injuries that you would think there would be from having less practices. And it's funny, though, because there are certain injuries which, is ha- which have increased. You've seen a larger increase in ACL injuries. You've seen a larger increase in Achilles injuries. You've seen a lot more quad injuries and calf injuries. Now, the quad and calf injuries, I, I think, are interesting because of the fact that I think that has to do more with training and, you know, physical training in reference to what that's what Joe, that's what uh, that's what Joe Shane and Brian Dable are trying to do. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to right now right the ship and help these players with their conditions. I think it's a little late in camp to start doing this. I think this is something that should have been done earlier in camp. But I think Brian Dable noticed 
something after that blue and white scrimmage that told him, you know, we have to start, we have to start conditioning our players better. And I think that's where he's going to right now that he's helping them build that condition. But I just get worried that as we keep limiting and limiting more contact, we're not only limiting the fact that we are not saving anyone from injuries, but we are also not, in my mind, we're not teaching proper techniques in reference to tackling. You are not getting players ready for the first few weeks of the season by helping them because there's, there is no substitution for contact. There is nothing. There's nothing you can do. There's no way you can substitute in any way for actual, you know, helmet to helmet, pad to pad, not helmet to helmet, but pad to pad contact. There is no substitution for that. And the more you take that away from professionals, the more they cannot work on their trade. I've said this a million of times. I remember when I was in Tampa, working in Tampa, I remember two-a-day practices with pads. I remember the morning session and the afternoon session. I remember going up and watching giant training camp in upstate New York for a week, you know, staying there for a week and watching these guys run two-a-days. Again, having a morning practice and an afternoon practice in full pads. I remember being at a practice in the Meadowlands in 86 and watching, and this was in November, watching Bill Parcells run his team in full pads and full contact. You can't do that anymore. And like I said, since the fact that we are not showing a serendipitous drop in, in injuries, who are we really protecting? Because anything I think we see more, the charts show that we see more injuries in the first few weeks of the season. Uh, that, and that's increased over the last few years than we have seen, you know, Back in the eighties and nineties, I just find I just I just find that interesting. We got a lot of fun shows coming up today. We got a lot of streams coming up today. We got a lot of good stuff coming out. We're going to be giving away that giant ticket sometime soon. Uh, also, I will be I will be broadcasting the Giants game against the uh, uh, against the Pats this Thursday. So you can tune in for that on a live stream. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, you can subscribe. If you can ring that bell, you know what that means. That'd be awesome.